Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to my channel. I am Nakia and I am so happy to have you here. If you are new, please consider subscribing now, later, when you feel like it. I mean, during this video though. <laughs> but regardless, please give me a thumbs up. As I have said before, if you do know, if you don't know, that is what matters the most these days on YouTube thumbs up and comments so please show me some love so my channel can grow because otherwise you know you may not see me no more i'm just kidding anyway <laughs> uh let's get into this video though because we got a book review to talk about in a minute Okay, so you have seen the title. We're not gonna act like you haven't. So we already know why you're here. You are here for a book review discussion about 12 Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Ocker. Now, I already gave a detailed synopsis in my March TBR video where I read a lot of this here. I tried to summarize as much as possible, but you can check out that video for, like I said, details about what this book is about but I will give you just a little short and sweet little bit so we can get into it um this book is basically about a man named Felix who is a uh normally a travel writer so he goes to like other haunted locations and he checks them out and writes about them or whatever and I mean he's been doing okay but he doesn't have that novel that's gonna like take his career to the next level. So he decides to go spend 13 nights at this haunted place called Rotter House. And he approaches the owner of the house and pretty much talks to her and is like, you know, this will help your place and give you publicity, blah, blah, blah. She finally agrees. So as I said, he's gonna go spend 13 nights at Rotter House to see if it's haunted. And like I said, mainly he wants to write a book and become famous. And he ends up inviting his friend Thomas along for the rod. And then we find out there is a mystery between the two of them. And uh, that also plays a factor in the story. So let's talk about it, shall we? Now, I'm gonna keep this first part short and sweet. I am gonna do a little bit of a spoiler discussion. Not really like, you know, I'm not gonna go too much into the book, but I really wanna talk about some of my issues with the book, some of the possible trigger warnings maybe. I have to tiptoe around them in this part, but in the spoiler portion, I will be giving some things away. But like I said, not any major plot points, especially the twist to the book. I won't be giving that away. So you can watch both, one or the other. Take your pick. I will have time codes linked below. You can also see the little chapter marks here, so you can just skip around where you like. So try to make it easy for you. But right now, like I said, let's get into the short and sweet version of my review of the book. So uh this book i enjoyed jk ocker's writing from jump like well okay the first chapter it just took me a second to get adjusted to his style of writing but these chap well the first chapter was short it was like three pages then when it got to him having a phone conversation with the owner of the house that is when it just got into a smooth groove for me and like i said i enjoyed his writing it was rather funny but it did not make this book less dark and mysterious and it had creepy parts, not necessarily creepy to me, but I mean, there were some parts, like I said, but overall, was this book scary for me? No, but I have said this many times before, it takes a lot to scare me. I have been watching horror movies since I was a wee little one, so it takes a lot. But it definitely was, you know, like I said, uh, dark and, you know, creepy at parts. And the comedy, the humor in it did not take away from that. Like I said, it kept me wanting to keep going back to it because I was just enjoying his style of writing so much. I found myself laughing out loud a couple of times. I love the relationship between him and his friend Thomas. Like I said, when Thomas showed up at the house, just the relationship between them two, and then knowing there was this mystery. Oh, it was driving me bonkers in a good way. Cause he would just keep hinting at it throughout many chapters. Like, you know, I wonder if he remembers that night or I know he doesn't want to talk about it. And I'm like, what night, what happened? I want to know. And it was just like, Oh, I love that though. Keep me in suspense, keep me on my toes. When we finally do find out what happened between the two friends, I was like, oh wow. But I thought it was gonna be a little bit more, but it does play into some other things later on, which was just like, oh wow. Um, there is a major twist to this book. And um, 
there are people who said they saw it coming. I did not. Uh, but I mean, of course, once it got closer to it, I kind of thought, you know, I was like, oh, man, dang. <sighs> it is is wild and crazy. This I consider this a psychological suspense. It is also horror, but it is definitely psychological. Yes, I can't say too much more because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, now, it was not perfect. Almost. It was almost perfect for me. Like this is one for some reason when I'm reading a five star book, I can feel it in the beginning. So this was one like when I started getting like three, four chapters and I told my daughter, like, I feel like this could be a five star book. She's like, already. I'm like, yes, I feel it. But uh, this is one of my issues with horror books, adult horror books. Anyway, I just always come across something disturbing to where I just didn't need that in my psyche and I don't understand why it was in the book. So there were quite a few, um, for me, sexually disturbing things mentioned in this book where I was just like, okay, I don't know why you said that or why would you think that? Or as the writer, why would you write that? And if I think it can be taken out, it makes me question the writer because again, I don't understand why I was there. There is a ghost in the book. I'm not spoiling anything, I don't think, but there is a ghost in the book that they refer to, well, excuse me, Felix, whose perspective we're you know, seeing this through. Uh, he refers to her as vagina face or vagina head or whatever. As I was reading it, it kind of made me chuckle. But then later when some other things were said, it was just kind of like, ew, like, why would you say that? And why would you think that? So just a little bit of a warning. Like I said, there's a little bit of things like that that bothered me, um, which is what brought it down to a four for me. Unfortunately, there was also uh, something disturbing that he said about his friend. And like I said, I'm trying not to spoil anything. So I'll get into a little bit of that in my spoiler portion. But for right now, like I said, I'm trying to keep it spoiler free. But yeah, so other than that, it was almost perfect for me. Like I actually would reread this though, because I want to go back and see what I missed that led to the twist at the end. I would just skip over those parts that bother me. Somebody would probably be like, why would you want to reread it? Because it's like watching a movie. I don't know if you ever have a movie where Let's say there's a movie with a sex scene and you don't want to see that part. So you just do something else while that part comes or you fast forward. One of my favorite horror movies, Cabin in the Woods, there's a scene. I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it, but there's a scene that involves a wolf head or something on, that was on the wall. Taxidermy, whatever, I don't even know. But I can't stand that part of the movie. So I always fast forward or look away or whatever. So it doesn't take away from the movie, though, because that part doesn't even factor in. So again, it's like... But anyway, so <laughs> I digress. But yeah, so I would actually reread this probably later on down the line. So in case you hadn't guessed, I gave this book four stars. I had to sit with this though for a minute before I gave my review because I was just like, why were those sick parts in it? Why, J.W. Ocker? Why? <laughs> it could have been five stars for me. But anyway, I will keep an eye on what else he does because, I mean, I really enjoy his writing style. I know he has some other middle grade, I think, YA middle grade books um, that I found on Goodreads. I may look at those. We'll see. Uh, if you've read any of those, let me know in the comments. But yeah, that is it for my short and sweet portion. So now I will get into a little bit more detail on my issues that may be some spoilers. So if you want to hear what I have to say, let's go. Okay, so as I was saying in my spoiler free portion, if you did not watch that, this book was almost perfect for me. Um, I really enjoyed his writing style. I love the humor. Oh, they had this game that uh, Felix and Thomas are the friends in this book. Felix is the main character who we're seeing everything through. And they had this game they would play called Film Fight and they would basically pick a topic like uh, possession movies. And then they would just have to keep rattling off movie you know movie titles and then they had rules like it can't be a sequel or whatever whatever and i just loved that part because there were a lot of movies that i knew and there were some that i didn't and yes there are ghosts i mentioned in my spoiler free portion there is a ghost that uh felix sees and he says that her face is split in half like she was hit with a hatchet or something and he refers to her he said it looked like a vagina so he calls her vagina head or vagina face or whatever that was one of the things where i was kind of like uh, okay that honestly didn't bother me as much until, like I said, later on when some other things came up and when I started thinking back about the book, I was kind of just like, ew. Then there was an issue that others had 
that I found out when I got to Goodreads that did not bother me when I was reading it, but it may bother you. You may think differently. I don't know. But Thomas, the friend in the book, is black. And I actually, when I was reading it, felt that the author handled it in a tasteful way. Um, he didn't even make it a big deal at first. It was brought up a little bit later. And then it was a thing of where like Thomas joked about it and, you know, it was like, oh, OK, he's black. OK. Um, and then it was mentioned like to describe some things later on, not Thomas, but just some things that were I'm, I don't want to spoil it too much. But so, like I said, I didn't have a problem with it. But on Goodreads, a lot of people felt like the author was racist and that this book was just his way to be racist or whatever. I didn't feel that way. So, you know, I actually was going to take a, another star away because of what other people said. And I was like, you know what? That wasn't my experience. So I'm not going to worry about that part but I just wanted to mention it in case you think the same thing or you read it and be like Nakia didn't say nothing about this yes Nakia did so <laughs> I'm just telling you you can also read my review on Goodreads it did not bother me but I want to put it out there what did bother me though is what I said the perverse sexually perverse things that he mentioned in his book that I just was grossed out by and I felt like were not necessary the vagina head thing that was just a minor thing uh there was this room that Felix was staying in, he had a name for each room of the house because of the, what happened to people in those rooms. I forgot what the room was that he was staying in, but there were a bunch of creepy dolls in the room and he didn't like them. So he had put them in a drawer. And then later in the book, he got frustrated with him and Thomas having some argument or whatever. And he went in the room, got one of the dolls out. There was a girl doll and decided to uh, pleasure himself with the doll nearby or whatever. And I was disgusted. I was just like, ew, what the, okay. And it was just like a short little part, but I was just like, okay, that's nasty, moving on. And then there's another time where, when we finally find out what happened between him and Thomas, um, I mean, I guess I could kind of talk about that because it doesn't give away the twist to the book, but okay, so we end up finding out both men are married, Felix and Thomas, and they used to like hang all of them together. And it was like one night they were all together drinking and everything and it got out of hand. Felix passed out on the couch. And last thing he saw was Thomas and his wife and Thomas's wife going upstairs and Thomas was holding Felix's wife's hand and then Thomas's wife had her hands on his back and they were going up the steps. So to him, it looked like they were gonna have a threesome without him. And they never really talked about it because Thomas said he didn't remember and his wife said he didn't remember anything. Everybody said they didn't remember. And then Felix was also pissed because he was like, y'all just left me there, passed out on the floor and went and did whatever. But they all said they didn't remember anything and they swear nothing happened. So that was what was between them two. Um, so at one point he gets mad at Thomas and, you know, they have an argument about it. And he says that he wish he could do all this stuff to Thomas, including basically sexually assault him because he was just like, I want him to feel what I felt or whatever. And I was just like, okay, that was one of them times though, where I was just like, is this something men think about? Or is this just this author? Is this just, ill? again, I was disturbed. And then later on in the book, he starts describing the vagina face ghost and he starts to see her as she actually was without before she was dead. And he starts describing like he talks about her wearing Victoria's Secret lingerie and he talks about like what he would like to do to her. And I was just kind of like, OK, OK, I think at the part with the doll. I was ready to stop reading, but I was like, okay, I'm going to ignore that because I really want to know what is going on with the friend and the ghost and all that. So I kept reading, but like I said, those things all put together by the time I got to the end, I was just, I just felt ugh about those things, but the rest of it was so good. So like I said, I was just so conflicted when I finished reading this because I was like, the rest was good, but those four part, four or five, whatever was just gross to me. Like I wanted to get them off. So um, I really would like to see what else he's going to do to know if his other writing is similar or what. Like I said, he surprisingly has written other middle grade YA books. So I'm assuming those aren't anything like that. But when you find out the twist of the book, some of the things make sense because, you know, what is going on with the main character, Felix. But then it's just like I said, as uh, when I think about the author, these are people writing these stories. It's not a true story. So I always think about them conjuring this stuff up in their mind and putting it to paper. And it's like, why? Why was that in your mind? Why would you put that there? Just eh. 
Okay. So anyway, as I said in the beginning, I gave this four out of five because I did enjoy so much more of the book. Those little parts just took it down a star for me. Otherwise it would have been perfect. It would have been a favorite book. One of my favorite horror books so far. I still would say it's one of my favorites because it's, it just kept me flipping pages and it was entertaining minus those icky parts. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that is my review of 12 Nights at Broader House. I hope I was able to keep it spoiler as spoiler free as possible. Uh, in the spoiler portion, I gave a little bit away, but hopefully it wasn't too much. And uh, do what you may with this book. Um, I recommend it because I really enjoyed it. If you can get past, like I said, if you don't care about the sexually explicit stuff, then hey, have at it. There are people who said it was too much. It took too long to get to somewhere. Maybe it won't be for you. Because it was entertaining, the conversations between the two friends, it was fine for me. So like I said, it was not scary to me. It did have creepy parts. I would definitely recommend reading this around Halloween time, uh, at night time. But yeah, it's what I have to add to the conversation. So again, there we have it. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this review, you can check out other ones I've done. Stay tuned for more in the future. Check out what else I have on the channel. There's plenty. You know, I'm new here. I got enough. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. And until next time. Snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book. Unplug as much as possible. Be kind to all kind. And I will see you next time. Bye.